Hello there, it's me, Sari. I'm here today with my final video for the Wild Orchid Crafts and the Wild Bunch here on YouTube. Today I'm going to make a tag, an affirmation tag, with the statement, don't take any shit. It's a tag that I made quite a few years ago and I'm going to make an uptake on that. I'm going to let myself be inspired by this tag that I made uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's a congrats tag that I'm going to send to a girl that's called Tina. And I have used some stamps here from Vilda Stamps. This is your day, Tina. Congratulations. I have used different kinds of die cuts and such. And I thought I'd take this idea and put it to use when it comes to that don't take any shit bit. So let's get started. In this case I'm making a quite a big tag and in order to have that paper stick to this I thought I'd put some tape here. And then, then I'm going to Actually, I'm not going to. I don't want the paper to be absolutely straight everywhere. Just take it away. And in this case, I have just taken this piece of paper and I have sprayed with some white memories mists, chipped cream from memories mists. And here has got a ball that you need to shake in order to get that one going. This is a bit chalky colour, so you have to bear in mind that if you're going to have this on a surface, it is going to rub off. Now I'm going to just put that like so. Dab it there, and I'm sure you can... Well, you, perhaps you can't see it that well, but I'm getting this white uh, ink on my fingers, as you can see there. So now the fun bit starts. I have to decide on how to tear this paper up. It does take a bit to dry. It isn't still dry, so it kind of breaks by itself there. But I still wanted to give it a go because I like that spray effect. It's still a little bit see-through, so you can see the text underneath and everything. And uh, this shouldn't matter that much if this isn't uh, perfect or not, because I'm going to be putting on a piece of uh, <clears throat> corrugated cardboard here. It's a piece that I just cut to size, where I thought I'd want it, like so, and then I tore off some bits and pieces here and there. And then I painted a bit of the background with the Distress Paint Picket Fence. This also takes some time to dry, so I used my heat gun to do so. And then I took just a little bit of archival ink saffron colour and I just dragged it over the highlighted part so you would get that sort of a yellowy effect going on here. At first I wanted to make something you know, shabby chic like, but I can't bear to go that far. I mean, yeah, so I intend, my intention was to go so, but somehow I'm, I don't end up there. Let's see if I can focus a little bit more so you can get a closer look on what I'm doing. And uh, just to finish things off on this cardboard bit, I actually did drag some coffee uh, colored archival ink also just on the edges, so it would actually pop up even more from the background. So now I'm going to glue this one down, or tape it down, adhere it down, I could say perhaps, So I'm using an adhesive. So I'm just going to put it here, and let's see. I see now that there are bits and pieces of tape, so I could just rub it off like this so it won't be sticking, having everything stuck there. So let's see where I could end up from this. After that I die cut a honeycomb net with this die from Chirilin. It's a beautiful die and it absolutely cuts through even a little bit thicker materials. This is a bit sturdier cardstock, so I'm really happy about that. 
and it does cut it into a sort of a rectangular shape but I want it to be a little bit wonky and that is the reason for this looking like this. So I'm thinking of placing it down like so and then I went ahead die cutting a couple of stars with Tim Holtz's st stacked stars die, a big die from Sussex and Tim Holtz and I die cut them out of um, this beautiful paper, I think it was jelly bean soup and in order to get get that one to lift from the background I actually did take the same coffee ink and dabbed it with a, just a kitchen sponge and dragged it around the circle and, and the ends like that, edges like that and in order to make this net stick I'm thinking of just gluing these down like so and I'm also thinking about where I'm going to put that statement don't take any shit and I'm, I do want this yellow net to show because I'm, I'm going to play around with the yellowness and I'm going to put some yellow roses and everything there so bear with me so let's see if I could use something else I'm a bit don't take any shit you know this one could be fun let's see if I can put it on top or just hang it there or you know that one could be hanging like so that was a really nice idea I think I'm going to save that one for later so let's see now I have prepared even more let's see if I can find all these small bits and pieces I have um, stamped the word uh, take with stamps from Vilda stamps and I have <clears throat> die cut them with a circle punch a really small one actually it's a 5 and 16 inches of a circle so really really tiny and it works really nicely around the no, <clears throat> the letters like so and I'm just going to snip it and I got my circle there so let's see if I can glue this one down and since I am the kind of person that absolutely likes a little bit of structure I'm just going to you know I seem to be ahead of myself somehow I think I'm just going to put a really good blob of glue there so I'm hoping it will help keep this net in its place because the corrugated cardboard is a <coughs> isn't um, yeah, I need to push it down isn't flat in itself so it really needs some kind of a glue that could go through that pattern so that is why I'm really glad to use the adhesive glue here just glue these stars down like so you see I'm still struggling I want to make it work with these with these sort of beige brown colors I'm not going to go there and go use black because that is what I usually do but I just want to challenge myself this time let's see if I can make this one work by just putting a little bit of glue there and let it dry for a bit now I'm you know this is so small and I ought to have known that I haven't got the proper skills to make that work so I'm just going to glue it down immediately and you know I'm not going to be bothered about everything being perfect <clears throat> they don't call me Brota Britta for nothing you see Brota Britta is a kind of person that just goes with the flow just look at this if you could see what I see now I mean for goodness sake it's hanging on like a in a spider's web really and it's twirling and giving me a hard time well now at least I had the chance of letting it dry, but I just have to put something else to make it stick better. So, don't take is what it's going to be in just a little bit. And just to have a bit of a difference, not having to die cut everything out with a circle punch, I decided on just damping them, the, the letters, in a row like this. <clears throat> and then I just snipped them off and make them, made them into this word ingen. Ingen could also mean nobody, but in this sentence it's gonna it's going to mean no no. So to ingen don't take any. Don't take any.
shit. So somehow I'm going to fasten that one or should I think about putting an arrow or something there? But you see, now I'm going to the black. I can't help myself now, can I? If I were to put this arrow there, I don't think it's going to do that much. I do have this arrow because I don't want to hide too much of the the star. You know, I, th I think I just have to go with my ori original black plan. To put some glue there, and I'm going to put <clears throat> like so. I also have to leave some room for the roses. Just have to make it work, I suppose. You know that it is a bit tricky. This is so ingen and. Perhaps I should put it a little bit askew because I'm not I'm sure I won't be able to succeed anyway having it straight all over. So I might as well just go wonky from the get-go. And I almost lost my letter N. It is so typical of me. So there we have it. And then what I did next was a die cut. A letter, all these letters to build build the word shit or wheat in Swedish, and I did so actually intentionally so I could use this as a template for later. I could either just do with a sponge and everything, just rub it in on a piece of sprayed background perhaps, or I could just spray it on top of it. So I'm thinking of using that one later. So now I'm going for these white letters and they do pop really nicely from that brown as I can see. You know, this is annoying. So this won't be easy either, but I'm, I'm hanging in there, you see. I'm not giving up. That's the most important thing, I think. Don't take any shit. So, I could say that the glue gun is giving me a hard time, but I'm not going to surrender now, am I? So, we are going to be the best of friends. Imagine, I could shut up for a second. So, now we have that one there. Don't take any shit. And I did think about using this one actually. I do feel like it could come in handy. Should I just put it a little bit on top just to give it some structure and texture and everything? Should I put it a little bit under there so it wouldn't be that evident that it is square? Should I have it poking like so? But you see, I did like the simplicity of it just hanging down like so. I did actually. So now I can place this one in the center and use this as a guide. Or oh, I could just glue it down like so and I couldn't I? No, just put a piece of glue there. Put it under the net and try to center it. So if I would like to, I would still have the possibility of actually making a hole there and putting on a piece of string or something just to hang this from somewhere. Let's see if I'm, if I'm going to be happy with this at all. I'm not sure right now. I would like to make use of these flowers. And the bigger the better. Perhaps I could cluster them up and make a big piece. I also tried spraying a couple of flowers here. I, do, I actually do like the way this one looks with the colors and all. Perhaps I should put it there. 
So I like them being a little bit bigger. Bloody hell, I almost fell there. Uh, I haven't got any a proper pencil or anything here. I just need to find something. I've got so many extension cords on the floor, so I'm just tripping all over them. A bit of a working hazard there. Could it be called, perhaps? And let's see if I could see myself using these different colours here. And if I'm going to be able to make any kinds of uh, combinations with the other flowers. These are, of course, from the Wild Orchid Crafts. They started out being like this. Aqua Trellis Roses. 40 millimeters in diameter, that's why I like them. And since they are so pale, I can actually do the, a little bit of spraying on them and to make them look as I want them to look. So I think I'll just actually be as bold to use these. Perhaps... You know, I think I'll just go for the yellowness. So I've got something else here. What could it be? I'm thinking that it might be from this package. They are the 20 mixed earth tone trellis roses, 35 millimeters in diameter, and the code is MKX 095 35 millimeters. So I'm thinking that having the three hues of yellow could be nice. Or should I just try to make a combo somehow, some other way? This is the part I didn't plan that well, because I knew it was going to take some time. Perhaps I could go for these ivory rose buds. These are 4 millimeters in diameter. Not that big, as you can see. I need a pair of scissors. I do like to put them in a sort of a regular fashion. I, I tend to put a couple of different kinds of sizes of them together. seem to find any proper sized buds so I think I'll just have to do it in another way then just going to make this into quite a beautiful looking thing I have to have some more I need but they are brown that's the problem you see perhaps I could go for these then change your mind girl so these are the chocolate brown rose buds six millimeters in diameter GST 050. This is a <clears throat> better size, I think. So perhaps the question is now should I go with this one as it goes smaller and smaller? Should I just try to make it work with that bud peeking out there? I'm just going to fasten it in the other stem so it has something to hang on to. And as for this white bud, I'm thinking of doing the same, but I'm just going to put it on the other stem like so. And hopefully I'll be able to hide it behind the other one like so. So I'm thinking of making a pretty long looking rose, rose thingy here. And I could actually just hide it underneath that rose because I haven't got the scissors. I'm sorry, being out of frame there. Just going to hide it underneath there. 
and I'm just going to glue those down and I'm going to need some more glue I'm just going to take a bit of glue on the end and I'm just going to you know it didn't work so I have to take out a little bit of glue here so in this case I'm just going to put a lot of glue there put it there where I think I want it like so press it down gently and then I'm going to take the other one a generous amount of glue always helps, I think. Where did you go? So now I think that I'm actually ready to put in a little bit more glue here. It needs to have be out of this You need, you need to make them work, connect like that, and then you're ready to go with some more gluing. I do like this. I like the way it actually is multicolored. So I'm just going to put it there, even though I'm missing out on that part. And then I'm going to go for something. You know, I do have these golden yellow open roses, 25 millimeters in diameter, MKX307. So if I should make a combination of these as well. Or should I go for something brown instead? Because I do want it to pop a little bit more from the background. So I think I'll go for something brown. And I did have this to spin it around like so. Should I go for some buds? I'm sure I should. And press for that one, I could actually tilt it up. And I'm just going to fasten them like so. And I'm actually going to let them go like so, and so. I think it, it's all right actually. So don't take any shit, that one is a little bit hidden underneath. Let's see if I can lift this one up. Well, I must say that the glue is doing its job really well. So now I have to find a way to hide that openness there, but it's all right because then I can really lift it so I can have that shit work pop out even more. So I'm just going to hang them there and I'm going to fasten them with this rose. having the coil go upwards. Some, somehow I just want to have it like that. So don't take any shit. I think that will have to do it. I might actually make a hole and perhaps have a string or something coming out of that one. I could also see myself putting on an easel in the background just so it could stand on its own really. And I could also see myself putting on just a little bit more glitter glue with stickles or something like that. Otherwise, I think I'm happy. It isn't the same as this one. But it's nice to actually try something different out every once, every once in a while. As you can see, there's a difference in size. So with this video, I'm going to say thank you for being a part of this wonderful design team. And uh, I'm hoping to be able to do some new crafty projects really soon. Just going to rub this one off. Alright, it's time to say bye-bye. And don't take any shit, my people. Bye-bye.